Hi, I'm Diane Price, President and CEO. Today with me is... I'm Brandi Berg, Curriculum and Instruction Coordinator. We've learned so much about the, the growth of young children in these first five years of life and how critical they are for our kiddos. Um, not only for school success, of course we want that for all of our children, but for their lifelong success. So, you know, as we've been talking with people about the work we do, we've talked about health, we've talked about mental health, social emotional, social emotional development. But what's that cognitive component? What is a high quality early learning program? How do they address the cognitive growth and development of a young child? Yes, so we really look at that cognitive piece with our curriculum and we want it to be well-rounded to meet all the needs of the kiddos. So we're focused on different elements of that cognitive piece. So we're looking at science, math, even social studies at this young age, um, literacy, concept development, all kinds of things. And this can really come to life in play for the kiddos. So we can look at engaging the kids in not only free play, but in teacher-led play through puzzles and exploration of different concepts that they're doing as they're reading books. Because we really like to um, bring books and literacy to life for the kids in the classroom. And we know that that can be key to their development because it makes learning meaningful and fun for them. And so that's really what we're trying to do. So what's the role of the teacher in that? I know um, there are curriculums that some of us refer to as CAN curriculums. They tell the teacher everything to say and do. Yes. Um, they're very structured for children. I heard you say play. We know how important that is. Mm -hmm. So what's the role of the teacher in a good quality program and in that cognitive yeah. development? I really see the teacher as kind of the educational guide for the children. So we like our teachers to develop um, their own curriculum based on guidance provided by us and our curriculum. And we want it to be meaningful and relevant to the kiddos. So we have our teachers individualize our curriculum to meet the kids' needs. So if I know I've got a child that really loves dinosaurs, I might pick a book related to dinosaurs to read to the kids and incorporate math and science and exploration that way so that it's meaningful and relevant to my kiddos. The teachers can also then take where they know the kids are at developmentally and meet their needs that way. So if I've got a kid that's starting to write, I might do some um, sand in the sensory table and practice tracing letters with that kiddo um, with their fingers to to help bring that to life for the kids and make it again fun and meaningful and engaging for the kids. So one of the things that we know is important for children and particularly when they enter the, the K-12 system is the engagement with families. Yes. So how do we coordinate, work with, um, join with families around that cognitive development and help parents know where their kiddos are and then what, how do we engage families? Yeah. I think the biggest thing is communication and I know that um, over the past year, it's been difficult. We've had some struggles with where we've wanted to be with family engagement just because we've been limited on families in the classroom. Um, however, we do a lot with communicating with our families, not only daily at drop off and pick up, pick up, sorry, but as well through parent teacher conferences. So when we meet with our parents, we meet with them quarterly. We like to go over where our kiddos are at developmentally and talk to them about not only what goals we might have for the kiddos, but what goals they have. What do they see happening at home? What do they want to continue see, seeing happen with their kids? And then we actually set goals with the parents. And then one part that the parents actually don't see is that um, myself as a curriculum coordinator, I go in and I meet with the teachers and I discuss what happened with the parents? Tell me about the goals that they have. What goals do you have? And then we work together on ways we can incorporate those family goals into the lesson plan and the learning for the kiddos to make it really meaningful for the kids. Great. I think, you know, this whole idea of education and tra children transitioning to school and what a struggle that might be for some families. Um, but I often wonder, do parents sometimes have maybe higher expectations for children at certain ages than maybe we have for children based on our kind of our information? Yes, I think that is very true. Um, and I think it's difficult because even the public school system or private schools, depending on where you want to put your kiddo, every school has different expectations as well. We really follow what's developmentally appropriate for children based not only on NACI, who we're accredited through, but I also, as I'm training the teachers, look at the CDC's guidance, which comes from um, kind of government and, and the health department to tell us what's really appropriate for kiddos. So we talk about things like counting, and a lot of times, um, I was actually just talking to my sister about this this weekend. Her son is five, getting ready to go to kindergarten. And she was saying how he was expected to be counting to 20 meaningfully. And I said, well, actually, <laughs> he's expected.
expected to count to 10 meaningfully. Um, that's really what the research shows us. And so we try to communicate that a lot, what the expectations are and what's developmentally appropriate for kiddos to help parents see, but then to help parents know what we're doing to support their kid to get to the next level. So before we can meaningfully count to 20, we want to work on a one-on-one -on -one correspondence and making it all the way to 10, because that'll build that foundation to getting there. In order to know the letters of the alphabet, we first want to recognize the letters of our own name. So we're going to break down those concepts even further to make it meaningful and relevant for the kiddos and to make that growth and development sustainable as they enter kindergarten. Brandy, thank you. Yes, thank Great you. Great talking to you. You know, for you folks out there um, who are interested in the work we do and support the work we do, I hope what you hear, I think you hear things that are really about joining with families, which we've talked about. and understanding the individual needs of children and making sure we understand where children are and helping them progress and learn. You know, our goals are around supporting that family, supporting that child, helping them be successful in school. But it's also around understanding um, what it's like to be a child, to be able to play and have fun and engage and learn to share and all those kinds of things. And, and I hope what you hear when you hear about the work we do in this high quality program, that you hear all of that and trust that these children are getting the highest quality early care and education possible, um, research-based, supported by um, community, that really helps children be able to be successful in school. So thank you, um, stay tuned. There's more to come about Early Connections Learning Centers.